I'm gonna make a bold claim and say that returning back to an instrument after a long time off is in some ways more difficult than learning as a complete beginner. This may seem very false, but I've now seen too many examples that tell me otherwise. Of course, if you took piano lessons as a kid, this prior knowledge will give you a huge boost when you start playing the piano again as an adult. However, more often than not, there's something very annoying about this process that creates a lot of resistance. A lot of times it's just more uncomfortable than it needs to be. And I think the more accomplished and or advanced you were in the past, the more discomfort there will be when you return. That's because letting go of a skill is kind of like letting a ship sail off. How fast the ship sails off will be different for everyone. For a full-time musician like myself, it only takes a few weeks, sometimes even just a few days, to start losing sight of this ship. And for me, this happens from time to time. I've also taken a full year off of playing before, so I am familiar with how lame it feels when returning. I think a huge part of this is that you inevitably feel less competent when restarting than you did before. And this is a feeling we all just want to avoid completely. But confronting it can be like punching through a sheet of paper. You just have to do it. And then you realize that the barrier is really not that thick. And once you get through this, the skills that you built up in the past will begin to thaw and then you'll be on your merry way. I now have five tips that will help anyone get back on track, whether it's been 10 years or a few months since you've last touched the piano or any other instrument for that matter. Number one. Emphasize a reason to do so. Why do you want to learn the piano again? This reason does not have to be that significant or grand, but identifying it to yourself is very crucial. It can be something as simple as recognizing that playing music helps improve my mood, so I want to learn the piano again. Or I want to make a one minute long social media post of my piano playing because it'll be a fun challenge for me. Something like that. Then write it down somewhere so you don't forget about it. But we wanted to say hi. Number two, accept the discomfort while de-rusting. So just know that this annoying feeling is coming. Unfortunately, I know it too well. It's a mixture of feeling disappointed in yourself or taking so much time away from the instrument, feeling frustrated because you literally are not going to be able to do things that you used to be able to do, and also not having the stamina to sit there and concentrate. You're just not used to practicing. It's important to just acknowledge this as a distinct part of the process. Otherwise, you'll let it stop you. And also remember not to make it harder than it needs to be. This is not the time to all of a sudden say, oh, I'm going to learn an hour long program. I'm going to do my first concert again in one month's time, all of this. What I would do is identify your level first, then choose to learn something a few notches below that. So basically something that you may have previously thought was a little easier than your level or just a lot more manageable. Let's say one of the last pieces you played was Liebestraum by Liszt. When returning, you may consider playing Chopin's Raindrop Prelude, which is easier to play. And now here's another example if one of the last pieces you played was Chopin's Revolutionary Etude. You may now want to return with this Etude by Moszkowski, which has a left-hand figure that is similar in intensity as the Chopin, but again, slightly easier. Number three, have a non-disruptive plan. Introduce a small bite-sized plan to your week. The key word here is bite-sized. It could be something like, I'm gonna practice five minutes of piano while having my coffee in the morning, or I'm going to learn one measure of a piece per day, just one measure. It has to be some actionable plan. And when doing this, I highly recommend not going beyond your commitment. This way you develop the habit of simply showing up to this task. And this is way more valuable than the progress you might make in a giant session one day early on. I also suggest scheduling the time that you're going to practice or the progress you're making on paper. What I personally like to do is I make pie charts like this. <laughs> I draw a circle and then I just use that as a 24 hour grid and I fill it in with things that I'm doing. And if I have something that I'm committing to, I actually write it down, I draw it in before. And this way it's so hard to change it. Of course I can scribble it out, but if I just have it in there, I'm less likely to change it around. Whereas if I'm using a digital calendar, it's so easy to just ignore it 
erase it or change it. So it doesn't have to be pie charts, but if you have some method that keeps you accountable, I highly recommend it. Number four, try doing exercises and warm-ups. Keep in mind there are many exercises beyond Hanan. So if you are familiar with my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of technique and harmony exercises. I like using them as warm-ups. I also just like playing them, incorporating them into my routine. I love how scalable they are. You can choose to play it in one key or you can cycle it through multiple keys, play different permutations of it, different variations of it, and turn it into this bigger thing. By the way, if you're enjoying these tips, I would super appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, consider subscribing if you have interest in piano or music composition. Honestly, just having something to move your fingers is really helpful. It doesn't have to be like committing to a whole piece. Exercises are kind of like neutral territory. You don't have baggage attached to them. You don't have different interpretations out there that you are leveling up against. It's just a nice casual way of getting into the habit of playing something again. So I highly recommend them. And number five, Master an excerpt. So try focusing on a portion of a piece and make it a point to master it. Choose a portion that you really enjoy. Maybe when you're listening to a recording, if there's a little bit that you like to hear over and over again, choose that and treat that as a standalone piece. This may seem like an odd suggestion, but the key here is to get used to the feeling of completing something. So once you take this excerpt and you bring it to a point where you can play it well, you feel comfortable with it, you have it memorized, this can then turn into a catalyst to you feeling like learning the rest of the piece. One recommendation, again with social media, it's fun to post things. So just choose a minute of a piece that is maybe longer and make it a point to learn it so that you can film it and post it. With that in mind, here are some excerpts I personally recommend. Also, as you're learning past pieces or new pieces, try to introduce new concepts that you haven't tried before. One that I recommend is to make your practicing more creative by integrating some improvisation and recomposition. Check out either of these videos for more tips.